Late night hosts don't hold back when it comes to President Trump, either through razor sharp humor or tough policy speeches. Some sound bites coming, but this morning, the president punched back. Here is what he had to say. Late night hosts are dealing with the Democrats for their very unfunny and repetitive material. Always anti Trump. Should we get equal time? Question mark. He went on to call the coverage one sided and said many people think Republicans, including him, should get equal TV time. Let's bring in our political panel. Republican Brian McGuire, policy director at Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber, and Shrek along with Michael Tobin, a Democrat and former aide to Senator Chuck Schumer, equally qualified despite not having four names after your name. All right, so, Brian, to you. The president's got a point on this one, or is uh, he too thin-skinned? I think the president's got a point that the media does tend to take the other side almost exclusively. Late night is a great example of that. These guys hammer him every single night. And I think there's been plenty of reason for them to take a, an opposing view in recent days, and they haven't taken it. So I think the president's well within his rights to go after these guys. All right, and here's what he's going after them for. Take a listen. Trump had a nice visit to Puerto Rico. He said it gave all the first responders a chance to meet with the last responder. He likes to bring Melania this kind of thing in case they encounter a situation that requires showing concern for other human beings. That <laughs> becomes her job. In a new interview, House Speaker Paul Ryan said he thinks... President Trump's heart is in the right place on race relations. Oh, sorry, I misread that. His heart is in the white place. <laughs> okay, Michael, uh, fair to say that these guys are pretty tough on him. Mm -hmm. is, where does this come down in the, in the larger sense? Because you talk to folks in the Midwest, and they say, that's great, it may be a punchline, but he does, these late-night guys aren't talking for me. They're just part of the liberal elite. Fair criticism? I would say yeah, the president is being thin-skinned, but it's also fair that he has the ability and, and the prerogative to respond to these things. I do agree with your point that it's a self-selected audience and anyone who finds those jokes resonating is not a Trump voter or a supporter to begin with. Uh, but there's a saying, at least in New York politics, that something matters only if it matters to you. And the more this matters to the president, the more they're going to joke about it. Well, you, you might you might be right on that. Brian, to you, where, is, where does this go from here? Obviously, now the president has started uh, this between these guys. You can't imagine that Fallon and Kimmel are going to back off uh, from this fight. In fact, some have already responded on Twitter. At some level, when you get, when you get to Kimmel and these other groups, the, the big media companies are not going to rein these guys in. The only thing that reins these guys in is if all of a sudden either their ratings crash or people start boycotting their advertisers because of this. Do Republicans or perhaps the president now start organizing something like that? I think the president's probably going to just keep saying what he's saying. And any time they hit him with a, you know, a stone, he's going to throw a boulder back at them. I think that's his style. I think people expect that from him. And I think, you know, it, it, again, it's well within his rights. If they're going to hammer him like this, he's going to fight back. Hmm. All right. Uh, now on to a policy fight, because there are those to talk about. This tweet from the president this morning, I called Chuck Schumer yesterday to see if the Dems want to do a great health care bill. Obamacare is badly broken, big premiums. Who knows? Brian, you used to work for Senate Majority Leader McConnell. Uh, how much does this cut uh, the legs of the Majority Leader out from under him? Not at all. I think that if Chuck Schumer wants to be part of repealing Obamacare, Republicans should say, be our guest. Um, I think the original story was probably a little bit misleading. You know, if, if, if Ted Cruz calls up Bernie Sanders and says, I think you should become a Republican, that doesn't mean Bernie Sanders is thinking about becoming a Republican. Hmm. Um, you know, the, the president, given Chuck Schumer a phone call, Schumer's probably going to say I'm he's got chills and fever next time he gets a notice saying right, the well, president's well, calling. Well, on the other hand, Michael, we, we know that Chuck Schumer has said that I'm not going to be part of repealing. Chuck Schumer also knows that all of a sudden, that the pat, last time he made a deal with the president when it related to the debt ceiling, uh, and when it related to Harvey, uh, he got an enormous win there. Uh, and Chuck and Nancy, as everybody began calling them, mm -hmm. uh, walked away with big wins. Does this signal perhaps that the president is just looking for a win, looking to be able to sign something regardless of what it is and giving Democrats an opportunity? If so, how do they take advantage of it? I think you absolutely nailed it. Um, repealing the ACA is entirely, as we've seen again and again, a discussion internal to the Republican Party. So I do believe that's a non-starter. But in the, uh, in the broader picture of this president, understanding that in Senator Schumer, he has somebody 
who, if they come to the table with good intentions and a good plan, they will do something to get uh, to put some accomplishments up on the board. And I think ultimately any president, not just this president, is judged on what they get done, not who they get it done with. You know, so that's, uh, I think this is all very much a possibility. I would say not on the ACA. You know, Brian, to that point, we had a big donor on uh, just a little while ago who says, I'm having trouble raising money for a number of Republicans saying that people are boycotting Mitch McConnell fundraising dinners. Who wouldn't want to have dinner with the Senate Majority Leader? A lot of people because they feel he's not getting anything done. Do Senate Republicans, and specifically the majority leader, risk becoming sort of irrelevant if the president decides, hey, look, I've got to get things done and I'm going to do it with the Democrats? Uh, leader McConnell has demonstrated cycle after cycle that nobody is as capable of raising the kinds of funds that he has in the Senate. And so he's clearly got that, um, well, Brian, a lot I, of that, that, that may, when it comes that may to be that. cycle after cycle, but right now I've got Republican donors saying to me, I'm not going to McConnell dinners and saying I can't raise money for Senate Republicans. Well, for everyone who says that, there's about 20 who couldn't, mm. you know, who can't wait to get in. So mm. I think that the people who are being pluck, plucked off and identified as angry are not necessarily his network, mm. but they may be other people's network of donors. Mm. All right. Well, um, the fundraising totals will uh, will tell the tale. Brian, yeah. um, don't have time to get in your full title this time <laughs> as we say thank you, but we got it in once. Uh, Michael Tobin, appreciate it, sir. Thank Thanks you.